Welcome to Split Second! If you want to buy the best sleeves or other magic-related accessories, head down to Dragon Shield using the affiliate link below. This week we have Late joining us with Abaddon Revelation Storm, a list from Sakaira. Elder is back to his food chain shenanigans, this time with Torsten at the helm. Bal wanted to finally put his hands on a non-turned Eureka list. This is from Hisp, Chaos, Coco, Streets and Wizard Adept. And last but not least, Diogo wanted another try at his Jet Mirwin Connellus tax list. Late is going first and Imulgan down to 6, having found a single volcanic island but with plenty of ramp, in Sol Ring and Mana Vault. Mystic Grimora can help him accrue some cards with a mental misstep for interaction, after dumping his hand he can still refuel with Wheel of Misfortune. He sent Mind's Desire to the bottom. Elder kept his first 7 with so much ramp he can just cast his 7 mana commander on turn 2 and refuel. Marsh Flats and Misty Rainforest for lands with a Mana Crypt, Sol Ring and Wild Growth for ramp, Silence for interaction and Alms Collector for some sneaky card thievery. Bal Mulligan down to 6, having found a Command Tower and Ottawara for lands. Mana Crypt can help hardcast Prosperous Thief and start accruing some value with them and Eureka. Demonic Consultation lacks Storacle and Mindbreak Trap can be good against later. Finally, Diogo also Mulligan down to 6, not wanting to go lower. Flooded Strand and Wooded Foothills for lands with Elvish Mystic for ramp, Esper Sentinel for some card advantage. Search for Glory is a versatile tutor in these colors and in the nature of the list, and Aurelia can help finishing the deal. He sent Elish Norn to the bottom. Ready for the match? Late starts the game with a Volcanic Island into a Mystic Remora, and Elder Grounds looking at those three non-creature spells he wanted to dump on turn 1. He plays the Marshlets and cracks it for his Savannah. He still goes for it, casting Wild Growth on the Savannah, triggering the fish once. He casts Mana Crypt and later draws another, and he still finishes with his Sol Ring for another Remora trigger, so he can have the 7 mana on turn 2. However, Late responds with his Mental Misstep. Elder sadly passes. Paul plays a Command Tower and casts his Mana Crypt, triggering Remora and unable to pay. He then casts a Prosperous Thief and passes the turn. Diogo plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for his Savannah, to cast an Elvish Mystic and pass, sadly comparing his mana potential with his opponents. Later, gladly lets the fish go, having drawn 4 with it. He plays an untapped Watery Grave and casts a Mana Vault. He then casts a Birgi God of Storytelling. With the floating mana, he casts a Sol Ring, triggering Birgi for 1 red mana, and he uses it to cast a Wheel of Misfortune. Birgi triggers, but in response to it, Bal fires a Mind Break Trap. Considering their hand sizes, Bal prefers to outpace them with Yuriko, over facing 21 fresh new cards. Lid then passes with no use for the red mana. Eleran taps and wins the crit roll. He plays a Misty Rainforest and then casts a Lotus Petal, ending his turn. Bal untaps and loses his crit roll. He plays a Clearwater Pathway and simply hard casts his Yuriko, momentarily suffering from latest condition on weird tapping choices. He goes to combat and attacks Diogo, suspecting Elder could flash in something like an Endurance. Yuriko and Prosperous Thief both trigger, and he lets the treasure be created first to crack it to fire a Brainstorm. However, Elder stops him there. There's um gato. Who is playing Alms Collector in 2022, moço? This With Alms Collector out, both Bal and Elder draw one, and Bal still needs to put two cards back on top. They fear something big, but Bal just reveals a thousand faced shadow, ending his turn. Diogo plays a wooded foothills and cracks it for a taiga. He casts an Avacyn's Pilgrim and follows it with an Esper Sentinel before passing. Later draws and loses one from the Mana Vault. He plays a Misty Rainforest and cracks it for an Underground Sea. He then casts a Prosper Tome Bound, proceeding to his end step and triggering it, exiling an Imperial Seal. Elder still cracks his Misty Rainforest for a tapped Temple Garden and gets to his turn. He rolls for the Crypt and is safe. He plays a forest and casts a Mana Vault, triggering Esper Sentinel and it doesn't pay. He then casts his commander, Torsten, founder of Banalia. It enters and triggers, and he unfortunately hits more tutors than he would want. He then attacks Bal for 3 and passes the turn. Bal untaps and loses the Crypt Roll. He then attacks Diogo with both ninjas and Diogo double blocks the Prosperous Thief. Yuriko triggers and he reveals a Tetsuko. In the second main phase, he casts Tetsuko Mizawa, Fugitive and goes ahead playing Otawara to help cast the Thousand Faced Shadow, ending the turn. Diogo plays an untapped Stomping Ground, paying 2 and just passes. Later draws and takes one from the Vault. He attacks Bal with both creatures and it doesn't block. Late then plays a Badlands and casts his commander, Abaddon the Despoiler, triggering Birgi for 1 red mana. He then casts the Imperial Seal from Exile, triggering to Cascade to create a treasure and to gain 1 red mana from Birgi. He then cascades into… an inevitable betrayal. He ponders on targeting Bal to find Thoracle, but eventually targets Diogo since he could find an Elish Norn or some other cool creature. 
Beer Yin prosper both triggered again, but in response to the betrayal, Diogo flashes in an Evenmind sensor, which somewhat saves the table. He gets the Fauna Shaman and then resolves his Imperial Seal, looking at the top 4 and finding a Faithless looting to the top. He now casts a main phase delayed Blast Fireball, triggering to Cascade and gaining one more red mana from Birgi. He cascades into the Faithless looting that he casts, generating one more red mana and one more treasure from Prosper. Late and Elder both draw one card and later discards two, due to the cat. Late continues with an EZ charm, choosing to deal two damage to Alms Collector, triggering Birgi for one red and cascading into a Mox Opal, casting it, generating one more red mana and one more treasure. With no cards in hand, he flashbacks Faithless Looting, triggering Birgi again and cascading into a Lion's Eye Diamond. He mainly wanted to hit another Suspend card to refuel, but he didn't. He goes to his end step and Prosper triggers, exiling a Scroll Rack. Elder untaps and pays 4 to untap his Mana Vault. He still loses the Crypt Roll and draws. He plays a Prismatic Vista and cracks it for a Plains. He casts Skyclave Apparition, entering play and exiling Late's Prosper. He then attacks Ball for 7 and passes. Ball is safe from the crit this time. He draws and turns his creatures sideways towards Elder. They can block and Eureka triggers, revealing a Mist Syndicate Naga. In the second main phase, he casts a Rhystic Study and passes. Diogo draws and casts a Collector Oof, triggering Rhystic and paying for it. Later draws and takes one from the vault. He turns his team 90 degrees towards Diogo, since he will eventually need to do bridge loops, and Oof prevents that. During combat still, Elder casts a Force of Vigor, pitching his Spirit Guide, targeting Rhystic Study and Sol Ring. Bal draws from the Rhystic Trigger and mentions that could prevent Late from storming in the first place, but Elder also wants to storm with Food Chain. Diogo takes the damage and on the second main phase, Late casts a Scroll Rack from the Exile, triggering Birgi and cascading as well, into a Profane Tutor from the top. He casts it, triggering Birgi again, and he searches for an Underworld Bridge to his hand. The scroll rack resolves and he now puts the breach on the stack. Se alguém ao menos não tivesse usado um Force of Vigor, não é? Birgi triggers and he cascades into an end festivities, which he casts, triggering Birgi again. Still in response to breach, Ball fires a demonic consultation. He names an offer you can't refuse. He is clear with the top six, but eventually exiles more than 50 cards until he finds the offer, which he casts right away on the breach. Late's last card in hand is no counter spell, so we're back to Elder's turn. Elder untaps and takes 3 from the crypt. That's karma right there. He plays Hall of Iliad's Generosity and then casts a Toski Bearer of Secrets. He goes to combat and attacks late for 9 damage, triggering Toski twice, drawing 2 cards and ending his turn. Ball untaps and wins the crit roll. He goes to combat and sends both creatures towards Elder. However, Elder casts a Source of Plowshares on Tetsuko, so this way he can block Yuriko. In the second main phase, he casts a fourth Bridge Prowler, entering play and putting a minus one minus one counter on Toski. He mainly wanted to do this after ninjutsuing the Syndicate Naga, but his plans went down the drain. He still casts a Thassa's Oracle, entering play and triggering with three Devotion. He leaves one on top and passes. Diogo draws and casts his Search for Glory right away. He searches for Gaia's Cradle that he plays and then passes. Later draws and loses another one from the vault. He attacks Diogo for three damage and goes to his second main phase. He casts Dothy White Walker, triggering Birgi and cascading into a Chrome Mox. He doesn't imprint anything and Pass is quite mad about those unusable rocks. Eleren taps and wins the crit roll. He plays a Windswept Teeth and goes into combat. He attacks Bal with his commander and he doesn't block. He now passes fully untapped. Bal untaps and wins his crit roll. He goes into combat and sends both creatures towards Elder, who blocks the Thoracle and Bal can get the Syndicate into play. Paul regrets not attacking with all three, as the Rico triggers, and he reveals a dig through time. Not a bad hit, though. Ball ponders on casting it now, but it would give it to Latest Dothy, so he just passes. In the end step, Diogo fires a Whirly Tutor and searches for a Winota Joiner of Forces. He gets to his turn and puts Winota on the stack right as he draws it. It resolves and he attacks Ball with Collector Oof, triggering Winota and finding an Ogre of Autumn, hoping to hit something more from the top. The Ogre is attacking Elder and both players take the damage. Duke then plays a Carpluson Forest from the top of his library and passes. Late draws and takes one from the vault. The table is now in a Mexican standoff, where Late could kill one or two players, but then he would die to another player. Eventually, he attacks Diogo with Dothi and Fauna Shaman towards Elder. Basically, he wants to get rid of Collector Oof to unlock his scroll rack, so Elder fires a silence before blockers, and then both players take the damage. Diogo is gone and Late passes. But still in the end step, Elder cracks his windswept teeth to find a planes before going to his turn, 
He untaps and wins the crit roll. He is now in a conundrum, where he could kill both players, but is facing Ball with a dig through time and late with two cards in hand, able to dig two deeper with scroll rack. He goes for it regardless, casting a march of otherworldly light on Ball's blocker. In response, Ball is forced to cast his dig through time, delving six. He actually finds two answers, and one of them is a dispel. This way, Alert now starts tapping some mana rocks, and they expect a finale, but it is a walking ballista X equals 5. In response, Late activates the scroll rack, digging two cards deeper, but finding no answers, so it resolves. Elder then starts activating Ballista, removing one counter at a time, to ping Late, and he is our second casualty. Elder passes, hoping his two blockers are enough. Balan taps and wins the crit roll. He casts a March of Swirling Mist, exiling a Temporal Trespass to phase out both of Elder's creatures. He then attacks Elder with everything, and before damage, he ninjutsus Mist Syndicate Naga, returning the fourth Breach Prowler. Elder takes 5, Syndicate Naga and Yuriku Trigger, and Ball reveals a Wing Crafter and a Misdirection. GG! Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone! If you haven't checked yet, remember our giveaway is due! You can support the channel on Patreon and be eligible to win one of these cool prizes. Sponsored by Dragon Shield. This game was heavily influenced by latest turn 1 Remora, since Elder and Ball had plenty of artifact cramp. Alms Collector slowed Ball a lot and late as well. Diogo felt he needed to slow Ball's treasure creation and double blocking set him way behind, especially being relying on Darks to progress his board. Prosper and Birgi were powerhouses in the Abaddon deck, and if it weren't for the desperate consultation, late would have perhaps taken this one. This goes to show Ristic Study can be a taxing piece as well, and remove it only when you really need to. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Ajimo, Dragonhouse Cat, V, RJ, Heated Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragonsteak, Katerina, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wicked, Zinan, Nugan Smith, and CJ Wally, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!